Uh, my name is Lee Bermejo. I uh, work for DC Comics mostly. I've done um, a series of graphic novels uh, with characters like the Joker, Batman, Superman. Um, and uh, most recently I'm doing a project for Vertigo called The Suiciders that I'm writing and drawing that comes out late next year. My first, the first Batman project I ever worked on was a book called Batman Death Blow with Brian Azzarello. Um, and, uh, it was right around the time that Wildstorm had been bought by DC Comics, I think in 1999. And um, at that point in time, I was still working in, in Wildstorm Studios. Uh, so editorially, they were interested in still using Wildstorm characters. So they wanted to do a book uh, that featured some character of Wildstorm that I liked. My favorite had always been Deathblow. And uh, at the same time, I really wanted to do Batman because it's a childhood dream, blah, 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 you know. Uh, and at, at this point in time, I was reading Brian Azzarello's uh, first few issues of Hunter Bullets. I really liked them. And uh, I had read his miniseries with Eduardo Rizzo called John, Johnny Double, and so it, Brian was brand new still. And I really, really loved his voice, and, like his writing style. And so uh, through a mutual friend, Tim, Tim Bradstreet, uh, illustrator Tim Bradstreet, we organized this project called Batman Deathblow that was a crossover between those two characters. And um, it was thrilling because it was like I was working on Batman, but I wasn't responsible to DC editorial yet. And so I could do the costume however I wanted. Um, uh, we, we had a huge amount of freedom with the story. No one was really controlling what we were doing. So it was... Uh, it was an amazing creative experience because it was just kind of like they left us alone to do whatever we want. We, we wanted to do with a huge, iconic character. And so that's where that, that book came from. And um, yeah, it kind of uh, was the beginning of, of, of really, of, for me artistically, of doing something that, that I felt pretty strongly about, which was putting a personal stamp on each character you do, even if it's something as iconic as Batman. And I'd like him to be flawed, a very flawed man. And so my favorite versions of the character throughout the years have always been, you know, Dark Knight Returns and things like this, where he's an extremely, he's an extremist, but at the same time he's a very flawed man um, with a very, uh, with a very, with a moral core that that fluctuates, but to him it doesn't fluctuate. It's it's very. Um, it's very specific, but visually, I like to see him be a uh, kind of like. Um, I'm interested in a Batman that feels like he could really perform mo uh, like urban warfare. You know, I want some someone who seems utilitarian, who seems. Uh, I mean, he's going to war. You know, um, it's not. Uh, he's not a superhero. He's not a vigilante. He is a soldier. That's the way I, I feel about him. Um, and he, he conducts himself accordingly. He's a general on a battlefield, and that battlefield is an urban battlefield. And uh, so I don't see him as being very super heroic. You know, I don't see him making a huge, uh, I don't know, uh, huge super heroic poses and gestures and things like this. I, I see him working much more... Um, under the surface of things and uh, the quickest way he can get a job done he'll get a job done um, I see him more as Travis Bickle meets uh, I guess James Bond but uh, James Bond in a much more specific way you know not a globe trotting I don't see him as being a globe trotting adventure I see him literally being a guy who wouldn't leave Gotham City because he literally wouldn't like he was he's so obsessive about about that place and about doing his job in that place that it, he couldn't leave it you know so I see him being um, a bit more like Travis Bickle maybe in the sense that he's uh, psychologically he's just he's right there man I mean he's, he's on the edge it would take very little for him to you know um, go a completely uh, in a different direction with his life um, but yeah, I suppose I suppose my 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 version of the character probably doesn't differ that much from Frank Miller's version of the character. You know, 
I just tend to like a little bit more realism uh, than maybe Frank. Yeah, I did. I did a, a Batman project that I wrote and drew uh, called Batman Noel, which was. Um, Kind of like for me, it was kind of like a writing exercise because uh, I wanted to write and draw my own project and specifically a Batman project. But I wanted it to be something that was um, still represent reflected my world and my view of the character, but something that was already that, that was also spoke in kind of a broader thematic way. At the same time, I was thinking seriously about adapting A Christmas Carol, but doing like a real adaptation, not doing these fluffy kind of movies that we've seen or other, I mean, like if you read A Christmas Carol, there's an element of real like darkness to that story and it's disturbing and there's ghosts and like, but the ghosts in the story are more disturbing than the ones you see kind of in the movies and Muppet, you know, adaptations. And I want to do something serious. And then the stories just, the two stories just kind of mixed together. And I thought it was a great way to do a Batman that I love, which is an older, crankier kind of like Batman who's more, like I said, his moral center kind of fluctuates. So isn't necessarily heroic in every way, you know, like he's kind of an asshole. And like, I like that, you know, there's show the character as a bit of a as a bit of a cock and then see if there's that that moral core, though, that still exists so that, you know, he kind of like fluctuates around it but then he always finds that that center um, and that's something that separates him from you know criminal with Joker it was more just I just knew that character I felt like I knew how to do him immediately I knew what I wanted to do with him um, I knew what kind of story I wanted to tell and Brian and it matched very much with Brian's with Brian's idea um, we knew we never wanted to get into the Joker's head because you can't take away that power from the, from him, he's crazy. So the more you know of Joker, the less kind of scary he becomes. Ah. Ah. Never start with the head, the victim gets all fuzzy. He can't feel the neck. See? You wanted me. Here I am. I've been I've been kind of attached in, in a roundabout way to these movies before with the Joker in 2008. Uh, see, it's it's all this stuff that becomes kind of weird when it comes to the movies and and uh, you don't really know what goes on behind the scenes. You don't know how much of the information they're getting from DC from the offices. You don't know how much of that is of their own kind of uh, design. Unfortunately, there's really no way for me to ever have the answer for that to that question. And the only thing I know is that, you know, we were working on that book well before they even started filming. I mean, I started that that book in 2006. You know, um, I finished that book in February of 2008. So, you know, the movie came out when in July or something like that. I mean, you know, what happened there? Who knows? I mean. Um, I see a lot of differences between what they did and what I do. I think what we did was something a little more dark and psychotic. What they did was a little more co colorful and, you know, we still wore like a purple suit and had like the funny voice and stuff like that. Brilliant. It was a brilliant version of the character. I loved it. But um, in my head, that my version of the character was very, very different, you know? So, who knows? Who knows what they did there? I think that it's also a question of similar sensibilities. You know, Nolan and his crew, they're trying to do something pretty realistic, right? Like something kind of grounded and, and um, believable, I guess, if you, if you can say that. And that's what we were trying to do. So it's just kind of approaching things from maybe the same, the same place, arriving at different, different destinations, if that makes any sense. I, first of all, I never would have picked Ben Affleck. He wasn't even on my list of like people I would have considered for the role, ever. Like, I was shocked when they announced that he was cast. Um, but I guess, you know, either to, 
it was either good timing or or just um, maybe it was just the right mindset for that choice at the time. I just watched Argo. I just got an Argo on, on Blu-ray and watched Argo. Was very, very impressed by it. I love the town. I think the town is a fantastic movie. I love Gone Baby Gone. Um, I think that Affleck as a filmmaker is, uh, is extremely uh, intelligent and, and technically is amazing. Um, I think that people confuse Ben Affleck with these other three bad movies he did 12 years ago, you know what I mean? Like, and I haven't even seen a couple of them. I mean, everybody knows Daredevil, you know, in our world. And yeah, it's not a very good movie. I mean, there's just not much to be said other than that. But um, I don't think that was necessarily Affleck's fault, you know? I think that that movie, I mean, how much new metal can you put in a in a superhero movie before it starts to become like, oh my god, like, what is this? Like a, an advertisement for like, you know, a biker bar or something like that? Like, I, I didn't really understand that movie in a lot of different ways. But um, he has an intelligence in Bruce Wayne's intelligence, so I think that he can bring that to the table. Physically, he's the most kind of accurate Batman we've seen yet, right? Like, he's six foot three or four or something like that. He's a big dude. Um, you know, for me, really, it all comes down to the story of this movie. If the story of this movie is not good, it doesn't really matter who's playing him, you know? Um, I was like a really big Christian Bale uh, before he was cast as Batman. And then, like, even, even his performance, as good as I thought it was, like, dude, I can't stand that Batman voice that he does. It's like that, that real gruff, like, growl of a voice. I really don't like it. And, like, the costume in those Nolan movies, I was not a fan of the, the costume they did. So, I mean, for me, I'm just, I'm just more interested in seeing a new version of, of the character, you know? We'll see. Uh, let's hope it's good. Yeah. <laughs>